Hey everyone, it's Brian here at Redleaf. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know it's been quite a while since our last garden tour, but we've just been so busy on the property and in the gardens. So much has changed, so I think today is a perfect day for a full garden tour. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it. Let's just get straight into it. I can't wait to show you what we've been up to. Oh gosh, there's so much to show you guys. I don't even know where to start. But here we have this beautiful garden in front of the chicken coop. It's starting to fill in really nicely. We planted a climbing rose here to climb through this gate, which is also a new addition. Um, the last gate actually uh, rotted away and fell over. It was here for a really long time, but built this one myself. <laughs> really proud of it. A really nice wide entrance for the garden in case we need to lug some wheelbarrows through. Here we have the chickies. Hi, babes. I love you all. I miss you guys rummaging and foraging around. We've actually had to keep them pretty contained because because it's early spring, you know, the gardens are really tender and fresh right now and they were wreaking quite a bit of havoc in the garden. So we're keeping them in for now. And in the summer, we're actually planning on letting them out um, and have them forage. Over here, I added a really cute new garden bed that I made out of a old wheelbarrow, a metal wheelbarrow. I've been wanting to play and experiment with flowers um, outside of the vegetables because I see Dominic having so much fun with it, I wanted to give it a try. So here I've been playing and experimenting with my own middle garden. Have some gorgeous dianthus, it smells so lovely. Oh my gosh, and as you can see, <laughs> Red and white and burgundy is really my palette. I thought it would play really nicely on the red of the, the sunflower shed here. Um, I've actually planted some lilies back here and some dahlias to fill in in the center and really give it a full shape and form. But it's coming along really nicely. It filled in beautifully. Oh, this is gorgeous. Oh, with this little white euphorbia. This should fill in really nice and should all fill in really beautifully. We have tons of seedlings started. Here are all the babes doing really well. Just patiently waiting to be planted. We planted our first round of vegetables. I'm gonna wait about a week or two to plant the next round so we can have a nice succession and not have to harvest everything at once, you know? I've been planting a lot of flowers too because I want to sprinkle them in and have a vegetable and flower garden. It's gonna look really lovely. Um, Let's see, we have a lot of cosmos, um, zinnias, some cleons, chamomile, lots of things, lots of things, but we'll see how it all fills in. Oh gosh, the garden is looking absolutely wonderful. It's really starting to fill in. Oh man. And I'm really excited to show you guys this bed. So much is happening here. But we'll get to it, we'll get to it. I think we'll start descending the steps here. Oh boy, lots of things in pots that I've been, I've been really getting into trees as well. Here we have this beautiful red mulberry tree that I've looked so long and hard for and the stars aligned and we were able to get one. Not sure where to plant it just yet because it does get really, really big but it's a native fruiting tree here in tennessee and i've been really into finding native plants and planting them around the property here we have an elderberry it's looking really nice a friend gave me just a, a rooted cutting of it and it's actually been growing in really nicely so i'm excited to see where i'll plant that but i've actually gotten a lot more elderberry and we have some sprinkled throughout the gardens oh here we have our garlic bed planted this Let's see, last October or November, overwintered beautifully and now it's really starting to take its full form. So this should be ready to harvest in about June uh, or in July or August, sometime in the summer, but it's looking really wonderful. Our asparagus in its second year in this container and it's actually doing really well. I've let quite a bit of it grow because I just love the actual plant fills out into this beautiful fuzzy <laughs> tall plant it's really gorgeous really love it 
and it actually has little flower bells. It's so pretty. Over here, I have some Roman chamomile planted alongside some eggplant. This year, I'm going to be planting all of my eggplants in containers to help deter flea beetle because last year on the ground, they were so susceptible to them. Hopefully this year, oh my God. <gasps> no, it's already here. Oh my God, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna try everything I possibly can to fight this flea beetle because last year it was so bad. Planted it next to this chamomile to help deter some, but apparently it didn't stop it at all. Goodness. We'll see how it goes this year, but hopefully being in a container should help compared to it being on the ground mass here. Right here in front of the coop, in front of the run, another round of sunflowers that I'm gonna be planting this year. So I just loved how it looked last year. Right in with my herbs here. Got some rosemary, oregano that I actually cut back and I'm letting grow all the way back. Made some oregano powder out of it. Some sage. This is gonna get really big. <laughs> Did not realize how big it'd get until now, really. But it looks beautiful with next to some purple sage as well. Some lavender and more rosemary. Should fill in really nice. I can't wait till the sunflowers get really nice and tall. Ooh, we found these really amazing trellises at a garden center, actually, like way up in the mountain. It was way up in the mountains it was like 45 minutes away from here and we just stumbled upon it and found these gorgeous trellises this is where i'm going to be planting my loofah gourds to sell with my soaps i think it'll be really fun I actually planted some and they're taking really nicely um i started some from seed but i actually planted individual seeds in here as well um, for two reasons. One, in case this didn't take well and died back, I'd have seeds already started. And two, if they all grew together, I wanted to see which one would grow best. The ones that I planted directly as seed or the one that I transplanted and started earlier on. So we'll see how that goes. Once I see which one is going to win here, I'm actually going to cut the other two back um, and let just one grow. But so far, the transplant seems to be doing really nice. They have really beautiful leaves with like a silver, silver coat on it. It's really pretty. And it's going to be planted alongside some tomatillo, which I've already planted as well. Made this little teepee out of bamboo. I think it'll grow really nicely and train it up the, the little teepee here because I know tomatillo can get a little wild. Um, and when you plant tomatillo, make sure you plant it with a partner because it will need to cross-pollinate. It can't self-pollinate on its own. So excited to see. First year with tomatillo, ready to make my own sauces. <laughs> oh, over here, this is the kale bed and everything is growing in so beautifully. It's looking really wonderful. Up here is the tot soy. These I directly planted all from seed, as recommended. And it's looking really, really lovely. Been using it in the kitchen already. Really delicious, um, tender green. I love sauteing it. it. It feels like bok choy, actually, when you cook it down. But it's super nutritious and really pretty to watch grow. It grows really fast once it's established. Here's some brush in red kale looking gorgeous all these were direct uh i grew from seed myself oh this one i've been having a little bit of trouble with it's a jagalo narrow kale and i had a few seeds that i started in here i directly sowed these as well i didn't start these early on um and a while ago actually like say like a, a month ago and they're barely starting to take off i don't know what they needed um it might be a more warmer loving kale compared to the other ones now that it's the heat starting to kick in these are really starting to take off so excited to see how those do they're supposed to be one of the most nutritious of kales here's a purple kale that i got from lowe's because <laughs> the other kale that i planted here didn't make it and i just wanted to 
have a nice diversity of kales to have a really nice colorful variety. Oh, this beautiful dazzling blue kale starting to take off too. It's looking wonderful. And some thousand head kale. That should get huge. Like those get really tall. Should make quite a statement. And I just planted our first round of dragon tongue beans around to help fix nitrogen in the soil as well. And I think it'll look really nice growing in rows alongside the kale because kales love nitrogen. They're quite heavy feeders. So that should come along really nicely. Oh, here I planted a really beautiful row of sunflowers. So excited to see how this does. I mean, my vision is that this is gonna get super tall. And once this is about a foot or two tall, I'm actually gonna plant some sour gherkin and cucumbers and Japanese long cucumbers so that they can grow up the sunflowers and just make a gorgeous wall of fruit. <laughs> In the very front here, I planted a row of nasturtiums from seed. Um, a few of them have started to germinate around the garden, but they take quite a while. Soaked them overnight before I planted them and they're taking their sweet time. But I planted them here specifically to help um, deter squash beetle um, and also attract aphids and act as a magnet so that they don't um, infest any other plants and to eat them. They're beautiful edible. So I'm excited to see how that does. Here we have more of that beautiful zucchini rampicante that I planted last year. I just loved it so much growing up the trellis. I just had to try it again. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> There's a lot going on with this arch here this year. Um, on the very front outskirts, I planted some Japanese morning glories. This one hasn't germinated yet. Sam, what are you doing? Look at you, you're so cute. Oh my God, you're so cute. I can't even stand it. I love you so much. Yeah, you're so cute. No, oh, you're so loving. Yeah, you're so sweet. So sweet. Um, but yeah, morning glories here. Those should look really gorgeous. The Japanese morning glory especially. Oh my goodness. If you have a chance to look it up, they are just such a beautiful flower. They're white with splashes of blue, purple, and pink. They're just really, really beautiful. Um, and on the other side, I planted a vining nasturtium to climb the back there to also help deter against that squash beetle growing alongside the zucchini here because last year we had a, a pretty annoying uh, problem with them. So hopefully that should help out. And on the other side of the trellis, oh my goodness, I planted a pretty full grown hardy kiwi already. We found, we were really lucky to find one at a, a garden center um, about an hour away from here. And this kiwi is actually a perennial, so it should um, make a good home here and come back year after year. Um, but my vision is that it'll just take over this arch over time and this will be the kiwi arch. They bloom in Aug uh, July, August, so we should have some fall fruit from the kiwi and it'll look really gorgeous. But since we're walking through here, <laughs> here is the potato bed with uh, Colombian red and white cranberry beans growing along the side. Should teepee really beautifully over the potatoes and again help fix nitrogen because potatoes just love nitrogen. They suck it all up. Really excited to see how it all does. And at the very front, I just planted some calendula. I think this variety is called zeolites. It's like speckled with red and white, really beautiful. So it should be a nice floral element that'll fill the front. And when it all grows in, it's gonna look beautiful. Our, tomato, our potatoes are actually doing really well already. They've already sprouted. Um, I planted some seed potato on the sides and then I planted some bare red potatoes in the center to come a little later on um, to give us some succession in between the potatoes. Here we have some blue and over here we have some, oh actually no, this is a russet potato and over here we have blue potatoes. And as you can see, this bed has really transformed over the past year. 
Um, this side has kind of just taken on a life of its own. We'll get there in just a moment. But the real vision when we were amending this plot was to plant in bulk, really, like a huge line of corn and potatoes and tomatoes. It can really be anything that we want. But the inspiration led to all this this year. Um, after seeing just how much corn we got last year, you know, with just a few rows that we had, it's like, I'm not ready to dedicate an entire bed, like all this, to just corn. Like that would just be way too much corn. And right now the goal is just to learn and experiment. We're not really ready to sell at markets just yet. Um, I mean, we'll see how the season progresses. We're going to have a lot of food. Like this is going to produce so much for us this year. Um, but until then, I'm just having fun with it. Um, so I'm not gonna dedicate it all to corn. Um, there will be corn in the back here. Not yet, I planted our first round of corn over there, I'll show you in a moment. But again, with succession, it's really nice to spread it out in waves so you don't get everything at once. But there's gonna be corn here um, with beans growing up the poles and a, I'm not sure if it's gonna be a watermelon or a squash just yet but a play on the, the three sister planting method with corn, beans, and squash. Um, you know, you can mix it up with the squash, have a watermelon, just as long as it's something that climbs through the, um, the, the canopy of the um, corn to act as a cover to shade the soil to keep it moist for a longer period of time. And on the very edge here, I'm probably gonna plant flowers, because why not? <laughs> It's gonna look really gorgeous. Um, and with this bed specifically, I actually laid a really thick layer of compost um, on top of a layer of cardboard um, to really play on that no-dig method and not disturb anything that's happening underneath the soil. Um, and as I plant, I'll just create holes in the cardboard um, and have it grow that way because I don't want any weeds coming up either because since we were amending the soil, there's a lot of perennial weeds that are really hard to kill um, otherwise. So I think blocking out their light source completely should, should help with that. Now over here is where we planted our first round of corn, um, a Montana Kudu, which is a beautiful pastel corn with splotches of blue in it. And it's already come up. <laughs> so this year, as you can see, I'm planting them in blocks. Last year, I planted them in long rows and there was some success with pollination, but I feel like it would have been better if I had done it in blocks. So this year, I'm gonna try it out because it'll be easier for the ears to pollinate with a wider grouping of corn rather than the long rows. So excited to see how that does, especially this variety of corn, it's beautiful. And a uh, beautiful garden friend. Thank you so much, Ronald. He sent us these Jaradale blue pumpkin seeds, which look unreal. Like it's literally a blue pumpkin. Planted it with the blue corn. Really excited to see how it does together. Um, but I planted those seeds in there and they should crawl through the undercarriage of the corn to play on those three sisters. And when the corn gets about a foot tall, I will plant uh, the beans that I plant, plan to climb up the corn, Sam, get out of there, baby, um, to grow up the corn as it gets taller. It's still too soon, it's still too short, the corn, for it to grow up the way I envision. So we're going to give it some time. And as you can see, added a really nice little pathway here, because over here, this bed has really taken on a life of its own. As I mentioned earlier on when I was planning the garden, um, I've been really inspired by permaculture and this idea of regenerative farming. Um, so the idea here is I'm creating a guild, a community of plants so that this area can essentially take care of itself while producing food for us to eat as well. So in the very center here, I have an ever-bearing mulberry tree, which should get about 15 to 20 feet tall when it's mature. Um, and on the outskirts, I have yarrow, 
There's an elderberry bush there. It is so beautiful to watch grow. A native plant here in Tennessee produces beautiful uh, little black berries that are very nutritious um, and many ways to prepare. You can make wine, you can make jams, uh, more yarrow. Here we have some comfrey which is a great medicinal herb if you apply it topically. Would not recommend consuming it, but it's a powerhouse in the garden. Um, if you cut it back, it'll just keep growing, but you can actually use the leaves as a uh, really great mulch to help bring nutrition and life back into the soil um, because it has a really long tap root, so it gets really, really deep underneath the soil and um, pulls up a lot of like ancient nutrients um, so they're really, really great to have in the garden. Here we have a gooseberry. Never grew it before, but it just started taking, taking uh, uh, establishing itself here in this bed. Don't know if we'll get fruit this year, but they produce these little like grape-like fruits. Um, excited to try it. Excited to try it. And then I have these bamboo sticks here because I'm planning to plant um, Gumi Berry, which is one of the only fruiting bushes or shrubs that fixes nitrogen in the soil. So again, like I really want this to be a, a bed that takes care of itself. So really excited to see how it plays out. I'm going to do a video that is more specific to just this guild because there's so much I need to share with you all on this. But for now, we need to get to the rest of the garden. But this is looking absolutely gorgeous. Love how it's all filling in. And we were so inspired by this area, we actually created a retaining wall here because there was a really um, a steep descent here. So I thought rather than playing on the, the, the slope, we would just make a wall. And now it's a really cute little patio area for us to enjoy the gardens. Um, once this area grows in, it should be really beautiful to sit alongside it. As you sit here, we actually created a window over here to look into the neighbor's um, pasture over there because it's so beautiful. It literally looks like a painting. It's absolutely stunning over there. And now over here, I was really inspired to uh, um, plant a native bed specifically to help encourage the native wildlife and give them more um, natural habitat to um, establish themselves in and feel at home. So over here we have a lot of native plants. Again, this is another bed um, I'll make a very specific video on, but here's more elderberry growing in, uh, a native astilbe, more shade loving on this side gonna look really gorgeous when it all fills in native bee balms some wild geraniums this is the first year planting all of it so I'm curious to see how it does um, but the next year should be really 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 crazy the bee balm is getting really nice and tall it looks like it's really feeling at home here here's a really big wild geranium this one really loved it here and it's starting to flower these just keep flowering probably until frost. They'll keep going. Um, I'm not sure. I have to look up if it'll be of benefit to actually deadhead it so that it can keep producing because some of the flowers are already producing seed here. We'll see. Have milkweed growing here. This isn't the native one. This is a, a red flowering one. But here I actually planted a really big group of the native milkweed. Not sure if it will flower this year. I just planted it, but if it establishes and comes back next year, that's so great because I want all the monarchs growing, um, fluttering through our gardens and um, the orange milkweed. I think it's called Escleropus tuberosa. Not sure on the names, the scientific names, but those are beautiful homes for monarch butterflies. They love to lay their eggs there. Here we found this insane. <laughs> golden leafed elderberry it looks so gorgeous i believe the fruits are also edible on them but i was just so blown away one that there were other varieties of elderberry but two that there was a golden leaf variety it's so beautiful i'm excited to see how it fills in they get really big 
all elderberries get really big. They're they're really shrubs. So I'm curious to see how it plays into this area here. But I thought it was a really nice pop of color in this otherwise very green bed. And we were so fortunate to also find a native uh, wisteria. And I didn't expect it to flower the first year, but it has. Such beautiful, beautiful flowers. I love wisteria. They create these, they create these like bulbs. These hanging bulbs of beautiful purple uh, buds and blooms. But the vision for that alongside this native clematis, which is already taking hold of the trellis here, is that it's gonna grow over this arch and create such a dramatic moment. I can't wait to see. This whole wall is actually a new addition to the garden as well this year. Just started this entire bed. We're just so garden happy and so inspired. We started planting a few things, but there's still a lot of work to be done here. Here we have a gorgeous, oh my God, so gorgeous, variegated dogwood. Can't wait to see how this fills in, but I think it'll make a beautiful statement at this part of the garden, especially as you walk down this aisle. You turn around and it's just, bam, a great focal point at the very end here, which will then lead you to this entire bed, which is still in the works. Oh, and here's another variety of elderberry. This is the black leaf variety, which also produces edible fruit. Um, but the flowers on these are actually a really light pink. Super beautiful. Really gorgeous. So we're really excited to see how this bed fills in. Still needs a lot of work, but we're getting there. Just mulching this is a feat in itself. It looks really great. It's going to be a beautiful base for a garden. Oh, back to the vegetable garden now. Oh, here is another container that I'm planting eggplant in. Fingers crossed we don't get flea beetle like we just saw on that other bed. Um, I'm checking. So far, nothing. This time especially, like the beginning of spring is when they start popping out. But I also planted them more separately so it'd be harder for them to bounce back between the two. I paired it with some thyme as well, set to deter flea beetle. And I actually have some catnip hanging here alongside it because that is also set to specifically deter flea beetle because they their oil is something that flea beetles really don't like or the, the scent that they uh, secrete. But it's starting to flower and it looks really beautiful. And alongside the eggplant, this bed is gonna be dedicated to tomatoes, which have already been planted our first round. And in about two weeks, I'm gonna plant another round right in the center. And in the, in the center, probably carrots, because those uh, carrots and tomatoes pair really nicely together as well. And in the front here, have some pine berries. It's their second year, so they should fruit this year. I cut this one back to invigorate some new growth. And there are some fruits actually forming already. So to redirect energy to the fruit production, I cut it back as well. Next to some basil. Here we have some calendula seeds that have just sprouted. Oh, how exciting, I can't wait. More basil. And at the very end is where we have that kiwi. It's gonna grow up the arch there. Now this bed, which was the full-on dedicated tomato bed last year, has transformed into an okra and pepper bed. I planted the first wave of peppers on the corners here, and in two weeks I'm gonna plant diagonally as well. And in the very center is where we're gonna have our okra, which is already starting to sprout. I'm curious to see how this does specifically because I'm growing four different varieties of okra this year. And I'm gonna try covering up some seed pods so they don't cross pollinate. But this is an Alabama red. Here we have a Jing orange okra, an Okinawa, is it Okinawa? Yeah, Okinawa pink okra, and a bowling red here. 
so it'll be a nice rainbow of colors with the uh, okra there. And our first round of peppers, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Um, here we have our Murasaki purples. Hey, Murasaki. I'm so bad with the names, y'all. Yeah, Murasaki purple. I planted them last year. I didn't have good luck with them. I planted them way too late. But this year, I am ahead of the game. I'm so excited to see how these do. When I planted the peppers, I was sure to lay um, a really nice uh, layer of compost, bone meal, um, and just super wonderful goodness at the base of the plant so it can feed throughout the season and, and get a really nice um, constant stream of nutrients. So I'm excited to see how they do. And on this end, I believe this was the Edg Edjarski, Edjvarski. Um, it's more of a, a roasting pepper, but they seem to be taking hold really nicely as well. Very excited for our first round. This bed should really just come to life in no time. Ooh, over here is our one of our brassica beds. This one's dedicated mostly to our cabbages, and they are really, really taking form now. Oh my gosh, they look absolutely gorgeous. They're growing in really nicely. It's been raining quite a bit over the last few days and brassicas grow so fast when we get that consistent rain going. And they are getting huge. This is a really cool rainbow variety of cabbage. Really excited to see how it grows in. And I paired it with some Swiss chard to grow in between the extra space of the cabbage um, and onion as well. Here's a red cabbage that I got from Lowe's because I had two here that did two cabbages here that didn't make it, so I wanted to fill in the space. And these are just growing in like crazy. Crazy. Look at that one. It's huge already. And on the very edges, I have dill planted in this bed. Um, and as the dill flowers and grows, it attracts a parasitic wasp that feeds on cabbage worm. So Hopefully, I mean, I haven't seen any of those little white butterflies yet that um, breed the cabbage worm. But so far, I haven't witnessed any, any damage to them from cabbage worms. So hopefully we'll get nice big cabbages. Over here, we have one of the herb beds that is planted with a um, honey cr or a pixie crunch apple tree. Um, and some of them pollinate and are producing some fruit. But I'm not too familiar with apples. Like Dominic is taking the reins with the apples. So um, I'm not sure how they'll form or what they need in order to form full grown apples. But we'll see how it all does. The herbs is really where I'm playing in here. Here we have some lemon bulb growing in. Oh, got some. Oh, don't be alarmed by the snakes. Um, we just have them here until we have a place to place them in the garden because they're supposed to help um, a scare away birds because last year this was actually a strawberry bed and they were eating all my strawberries but this year it is the herbs so there we have some lemon balm this is the second year of the clary sage and look at how big it has gotten <laughs> they're huge oh my gosh clary sage is a biennial flowering plant so every second year is when it's going to flower and this is what it looks like on its on its flowering year. Massive, beautiful stalks. Um, I cannot wait to see it flower. Like it is really charging up to put on quite a show this year. I cannot wait. I would love to hear from you guys on ways to use Clary Sage. I know it's a, a wonderful medicinal plant. But honestly, with everything going on, I just haven't had the time to really get to it and use it the way um, it's intended to be used. But either way, it's beautiful to look at. And I can't believe how big it has gotten. And it is right next to a rosemary plant that has also gotten just massive. Everything is really loving it in these beds. Down here, I actually have some cilantro. Tried growing cilantro last year, but I did not have success. But this year I actually just sprinkled some seeds in here and they're starting to sprout up. I know they like it cooler. 
so that's why I actually planted them underneath the tree here because as the sun shines directly overhead um, it'll shade this area and help the cilantro grow well over here is another giant bush of rosemary Oh gosh, it smells wonderful. It smells so good. It's crazy how much of this I actually be using in the garden or in the kitchen, but it just keeps producing. We have a lot of rosemary in the garden, actually. And on the outskirts of the rosemary are some silver-leafed um, lavender, and this is called a hit coat lavender. It flowered already because I got it at Lowe's, and everything there is like it flowers so early. Um, so this already had kind of its peak, but it's getting new growth. We'll see if it might flower again. I'm not sure what it'll do. But this little herb bed is really taking shape. It's really filling in. <laughs> oh my gosh, and the perennial beds are looking gorgeous. Oh my gosh, this pairing right here. Dominic, Dominic did it. He did the damn thing. This is gorgeous. This is a really beautiful flowering plant called Lychnis. Last year it was so small. This year it just exploded and it created this like cloud of pink in the garden. Like little bubbles just floating. Really beautiful next to this Campanula. And in the center we have this gorgeous towering lily. I can't wait for this to bloom. It'll probably happen midsummer. Oh, there's actually already some buds in there. Wow. But if you saw it last year, it creates these beautiful um, peachy uh, uh, flowers. So I'm really excited to see how that combination looks together. Because the Lychnis and Campanula will probably go till about the end of summer. Actually, I think the Lychnis kept just producing until uh, frost. Like this is a beautiful, uh, sturdy plant. Really, really beautiful. I love having a perennial border with the vegetables. It attracts all of the beautiful pollinators that we need in the garden, all the beneficial insects as well. Here we're gonna have more lilies. And he sprinkled some alliums around, but I'm gonna let him give him, you an appropriate perennial tour because <laughs> this is what I wanna talk about. <laughs> now here, Dominic is espaliering these golden apple trees and they flowered so much earlier on in the spring. I wonder if any of these are actually producing any fruit yet. Um, we've actually had quite an issue with cedar rust. As you can see, the edges of our property is lined with cedar and this year they got the cedar, um, the cedar rust. It is a really gross looking fungus look it up at your own discretion because it's gonna freak you out it looks like a it literally looks like a disease a parasite it's not cute but it actually spread to our apples and now they're splotching this way um it happened last year and we try to get on top of it by spraying um a fungicide very early in the season but it produced so much of the the fungus that it just kind of happened anyway sadly but we're still getting some fruit. Here's an apple. <laughs> Very excited about it. Hopefully it grows. It'll be the only apple we get, I think, because some of the other buds fell off. Um, and down here, we have all this sorrel that is actually creating flowers now. Um, I tried cutting the flowers back. I tried um, cutting the whole plant back because sorrel is a perennial. If you cut it all back, it'll just keep growing. Um, and I cut it all back, hopefully to deter, you know, it from flowering, but it just really wants to flower. So I'm going to let it do its thing. And I actually tried eating some of the sorrel and I haven't noticed a significant difference in the flavor with it flowering. So I'm just going to let it do its thing and I'm still eating the sorrel. It's really, still really tasty. And on the very far end of this bed, I actually planted a moon and stars watermelon. And it's just going to fill this whole space surrounded by nasturtiums. Um, I did the same thing here that I did with the loofah gourd. I planted a start that I, I grew from seed myself, but I also planted it with some seed as well to see which one would take hold the best. Um, and honestly, the start hasn't really budged um, because honestly, I think it's still 
a little early in the season for melons. They like that late May, um, really intense heat. That's what they need. So I'm sure once the, the really hot temps start showing up, these will really take off. But so far, it doesn't seem like it's made as much progress compared to the seedling that's just sprouted. It's already getting its second growth here. So we'll see how that goes. Now we'll make our way to the center bed here. This is gonna be my salsa bed, essentially. It's gonna be peppers, um, tomatillo, basil, and tomatoes all filling up this bed. I think it should all go really well together. Just planted the first wave of pepper. Actually, this will be the only wave of peppers in here, um, but an Atudia pepper, which is a really bright orange pepper um, with marigolds in the front. It's actually is a companion plant to our peppers and tomatoes and basil as well. Found a really cool purple variety of basil. And on the other side is a ruffled variety, actually. Um, look at it. It's like actually ruffled little leaves on it. Never cooked or eaten purple basil before, so I'm curious to see what that's going to be like in the kitchen. But I have a nice long row of it with some green... Um, I think it's the mamalo variety of basil that I have growing. And some calendula as well. With our tomatoes in the center um, so they can grow up this trellis here. It's gonna be so gorgeous, I can't wait! Oh my gosh, they're really starting to grow. They're picking up steam now. They're already starting to get some second growths. Cut the, some starts growing up the edges here, which I may cut back actually because I just kind of wanted to focus its energy into establishing its root system. Um, I planted them quite deep. Honestly, I think I could have gone even deeper into the ground so that it can produce roots out of that deep stem that's in the soil. But so far, it actually looks really happy. Really, really happy. Ooh, over here, another TV. <laughs> Um, and I actually planted a group of purple tomatillo here. So we're going to have all the purple salsa this year. Really excited to see how it grows. I planted an abundance of them. Because um, again, you need at least two for them to pollinate. But now it's a party with four of them here. And some more marigold at the end of the bed. Just starting to take off. Planted it a while ago, but marigold I think is another plant that really likes it hot. Oh, now over here we have the early spring beds and they are looking luscious. They are looking gorgeous. In this bed, I have a middle row of uh, green Swiss chard or of green chard that's uh, filling in really nicely. I've actually been sure to thin them out because I just sprinkled uh, seeds in here and I thin them out as they grow so they can get the appropriate spacing that they need. Same with our carrots, starting to grow in really nicely, getting nice and tall. And I've been sure to thin those out as well. And in the very center of this row, I have onions um, that I started from seed. So they're gonna take their sweet time to grow. Unlike these over here, these I planted uh, with mini bulbs. So they're actually quite big already, but this bed is really taken off. I love how it looks. Here we have some purple cauliflower. Here we have some lettuce. What is this variety called? The yedicule, yediculi, or yedicule. I'm definitely not saying that right. Um, but it's a really nice like lime green, almost yellow green variety of lettuce. Um, cut one back, started using it in the kitchen, eating it. Um, it should grow back from that. In the center, we have white cauliflower, actually a snowball white cauliflower. Um, and here is actually an uh, orange variety of cauliflower called a cheddar cauliflower. Here we have our arugula, really taken off. Um, very vigorous growing. I'm so happy to see how well it does here. I love, 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 love arugula in the kitchen, so I'm really excited to be growing it. Um, I did thin it out really nicely, so they all have really a nice amount of room to grow. And because they get so big like this, I, I don't mind like taking one and just cutting it all the way back like this one. Because all the other ones are just going to tower over it and this will just keep growing and filling in as the other ones get cut back. 
to be used in the kitchen. Some more purple cauliflower. Here's another cheddar cauliflower that's actually starting to show its little bloom already. I don't know what that thing's called, but you see the cauliflower. <laughs> you can see it has this, this orange tint to it. So interesting. Oh, and this bed over here. Here we have our Mizuna. I grew it for the first time last year and just fell in love with it. I just had to grow it again. It has a really nice smoky flavor to it, similar to arugula actually. Um, but it's just so delicious and really vibrant. I love the color it gives to the dish um, that I'm using it in. And it's just so beautiful to grow. I have it growing alongside some broccoli, more onions. These are a little more spaced out than over here. There's a lot of onion, but I love onions, so the more the merrier. Here we have spinach that I grew similarly to the chard back there. I sprinkled it and thinned it out as it grew so that I was sure to have the strongest growing ones and also give them enough room to grow even better. Oh, I could actually thin out the next batch pretty soon. But as you can see, like these are growing really close. These are growing really close together. So you would just take one out. Easy peasy. And now this one should get a lot nicer and a lot bigger because it has all the room it needs to grow and won't feel the need to compete with this spinach. I'm actually just gonna lay it here so that it can add some nutrients into the soil there. Some more broccoli and the Mizuna. And I've been actually, um, every week actually, I've been making a tea out of, um, chicken manure that I have made and uh, fish fertilizer and I've been fertilizing them all and I've been really seeing a significant difference in, since doing so. Last year I did not fertilize at all until like towards the end of the season so definitely don't want to miss on that opportunity this year. I'm curious to see the difference in growth with them being fertilized versus last year. They still got really big last year but this year I'm hoping they'll get even bigger. And I, I think that's about all I have for you all today. The gardens are really starting to fill in. I can't wait to see what it looks like in just a few weeks. Everything's really starting to take off now. I really hope you've enjoyed this wonderful little tour of our garden. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this little tour of our gardens. There's still so much work to be done and I can't wait to see how everything grows in. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to spark conversation with you all. Um, if you want to inspire your friends and your loved ones, please share this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. If you want to support the work that we're doing here at the ranch, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can buy handmade soaps and candles made by yours truly. All the support is so greatly appreciated and I'm so grateful to you all. Again, thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care everyone.